analyzing international paper stock ticker IP to see if its market price is a fair value. We're using the select six analysis to look at the most telling financial metrics before estimating an intrinsic value for international paper. Then we're giving a final rating to the business. There will be a key bonus metric along the way that just might be the tipping point when analyzing international paper for your portfolio. Before we get into these valuable metrics, let's understand international paper stock performance. Right now, International Paper trades for $33.11 per share. In the last year, their stock price is down 30%. This is underperforming the S&P 500 index. In the last five years, International Paper stock price is also down 33%. They're declining at 7.7% compounded annually during this time. In the last 10 years, their stock price is down 24%. Going back prior to the global financial crisis, international paper stock price is down 6.5% overall. However, the company is up nearly five times from its lows in March of 2009. Additionally, the company pays out dividends. Right now, international paper pays a huge 5.6% dividend yield. Their average dividend yield throughout this time is in addition to these compounded annual returns in their stock price. International paper trades just $3 above their 52-week low. They're down $16 from their 52-week high. A little over 2.5% of their shares are sold short. International paper is a big business. They have an $11.5 billion market cap. But why should we be paying close attention to international paper? International paper manufactures packaging products and cellulose fibers. It accounts for roughly one-third of the North American corrugated packaging market, though it has operations in Brazil, Russia, India, and China. More than three-fourths of its sales come from North America. International paper serves a variety of end markets, including industrial, consumer products, and manufacturing. Starting with metric number one, we want their average return on capital in the last five years to be above 14%. The average publicly listed business earns about a 7% return on capital. Over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock is likely to return approximately what its underlying business returns. These business returns will be captured here by return on capital. We can build in margin of safety if the company is able to hit this benchmark based off the overall quality of the business being about twice as good. International Paper's return on capital has fluctuated throughout this time. It dropped to a low of 7.5% in 2020. Since then, it's rebounded. In their most recent fiscal year, they earned about 12% returns on capital. However, averaged out, international paper earns just under a 10% return on capital, coming in at about 9.8%. While this is solidly above average, this is below the 14% benchmark we are looking for, meaning this is an X on metric number one for international paper. Metric number two, we're looking for revenue, net income, and free cash flow growth in the last five years. This metric is all or nothing. All three have to be up for this to be a check. During this time, international paper's revenue has declined by 9%. Their earnings are down and their free cash flows are down by 25% as well when we're including their last 12 months worth of numbers. These are declines across the board here for the business, which is not great to see. This is an X on metric number two for international paper. Metric number three, we're taking the perspective of an individual shareholder in international paper by looking for earnings per share growth in the last five years. We learned their earnings are down in our previous metric. However, the company has bought back 11% of their shares outstanding during this time. Because of their reduction in their share count, this has actually led to earnings per share growth even though their earnings are down. This is a check on metric number three for the company. Metric number four, we're looking for free cash flow per share growth in the last five years for international paper. We learned previously their free cash flows are down over this time. The company again has bought back 11% of their shares outstanding. That's important because when you purchase a share of stock, what you're really buying is a fractional ownership percentage in the underlying business. When a company buys back its shares by decreasing the amount that they have outstanding, they're increasing your ownership percentage in the business without you having to spend a dime. It's almost as if the company is making a partial acquisition of itself. Just like with any acquisition, we want the company to be getting more value than the price they're paying. That depends on a couple of things, including the price these buybacks occurred at and what an estimate of their fair intrinsic value is, which we'll calculate later in the video. Unlike with their earnings, their share buybacks are not outpacing their free cash flow declines. This is an X on metric number four for international paper. So far through our first four metrics, we have one check and three Xs for the business. Metric number five, we're evaluating how the company uses debt. During economic downturns, it's overly levered businesses that are likely at the greatest risk of poor outcomes. We want their net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments, to be below the amount of free cash flow international paper has produced in their last five years. During this time, they've roughly cut their net debt position in half. 
Currently, international paper has $5.2 billion in net debt, and in the last five years, they produced $7.5 billion worth of free cash flow. Even with their declines over this time, that's enough to be able to support their debt position. This is a check on metric number five. The company looks to support its debt position, even if its current free cash flows were extrapolated out over the next five years as well. With our second check of the day, through five metrics, we have two checks and three X's for international paper. Before we get to our sixth metric, let's not forget about our bonus. As our bonus, we're looking at International Paper's dividend profile. Right now, International Paper pays its huge 5.6% dividend yield. However, people make mistakes all the time by blindly chasing dividends. It's important to stop and look at the underlying fundamentals of a business to see if they can support their dividends. In all five of these years, even with declines in their free cash flow, it looks like International Paper has supported their dividends. While they have cut their dividends in recent years, it looks like the business has maintained a modest dividend payout ratio the entire time. Although this ratio has increased in recent years, while this is a snapshot of their last five years of performance and it's no guarantee for the future, international paper seems to support their dividends using their free cash flows. The big metric of them all, metric number six, we want their average free cash flow to their total enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this provides a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury. It may offer a reasonable starting point for evaluation of international paper. Currently, international paper has a $17 billion total enterprise value. This takes into account both their market cap and their net debt position. It gives a perspective of international paper similar to it being a private business. In the last five years, we learned international paper produced seven and a half billion dollars worth of free cash flow, meaning they produce about one and a half billion dollars of free cash flow in a given year. When we divide their one and a half billion dollars of their average free cash flow by their $17 billion total enterprise value, that gives us an 8.8% average free cash flow to enterprise value yield for the business. On a current basis, international paper produced $1.2 billion worth of free cash flow in their most recent fiscal year. When we divide that by their $17 billion enterprise value, that gives about a 7.1% current free cash flow to enterprise value yield for international paper. On both a current and an average basis, these yields look to be coming in a couple of percentage points above that risk premium. This is a check on metric number six for the business. Just because this is the case doesn't mean you run out and go buy international paper. This is not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. It's not financial advice. Stick around as we come to a more concrete estimate of their fair intrinsic value before giving our rating to the business. Everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that, in my opinion, is the main reason to analyze international paper, which brings us on to using a discounted cash flow model to come to an estimate of their fair intrinsic value. A DCF model is based off the predictability of a company's free cash flows. It's like any model in any discipline, its outputs will be sensitive to its inputs. We're starting with international paper's current free cash flows, then using historical growth assumptions to project these into the future. It's up to you to do your own homework. Assuming their free cash flows are slightly declining, but are pretty much flat for the next 10 years, then assuming they decline at 2% annually for the 10 years out from there. If we add in the company's tangible book value, which gives us an estimate of their net worth, if we were seeking a 15% rate of return, which is the rate of return Warren Buffett's looking for from his investments, in addition to his margin of safety requirements, from today's valuations of international paper, an estimate of their fair intrinsic value is just under $36 per share. That's about $3 above their current stock price. There are key points to keep in mind. International paper has a low degree of business predictability in its past. That could also be the case going forward for the company, and that affects our assumptions here. International paper's 5.6% dividend yield would not be doubly counted. It's already included in this 15% discount rate. Their stock price would not be appreciating by the full 15%. Most importantly, this analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. Before considering any potential investment decision, consult with your financial advisor. In just a moment, we'll give our rating to international paper, but we have to address something first. What are the qualitative aspects of the business? Starting with the qualitative factors supporting a potential long thesis. Number one, international paper's exposure to emerging markets may provide excellent opportunities for growth in the coming years. Number two, international paper, Westrock, and Packaging Corp of America will likely remain disciplined in taking economic downtime when needed in order to safeguard prices. Number three, after a decade of adjusting its business model to improve profitability, international paper will likely enjoy solid returns as it now operates primarily as a container board company. Then for the qualitative aspects supporting a potential short thesis, number one, exposure to highly competitive emerging markets could prove risky for international paper if profitability fails to meet expectations. Number two, with the spinoff of its paper business, international paper is mainly a container board business and could see a decrease in revenue and profitability if e-commerce demand normalizes. 
Number three, despite a period of attractive margin expansion in container board production, the best days may be behind international paper as new capacity weighs on liner board prices. There you have it for a balanced perspective of some of the qualitative aspects of the business. Now it's time to give our rating. In analyzing international paper stock ticker IB, we learned the company earns above average returns on capital of just about 10% annually. Their revenues, earnings, and free cash flows have declined in the last five years, but the business has bought back 11% of their shares outstanding, and they've significantly reduced their net debt position. It looks like their declining free cash flows are still able to support their debt position. On both a current and an average basis of their free cash flow to their enterprise value yields, those were coming in above the risk premium we'd be seeking in comparison to the yield of the 10-year treasury. International Paper has also supported their dividends in all five of these years. They pay out a high dividend yield right now. Even though their dividend payout ratio is increasing, they've moderated their dividends and they've supported those with their free cash flows in all of the last five years. It's worth reiterating this analysis is not financial advice. Combining the factors of our analysis, International Paper looks like a very strong candidate for further research. When we performed our discounted cash flow analysis, if you've done the work and you believe those historical growth assumptions, from today's valuations, if you were seeking a 15% rate of return, an estimate of international paper's fair intrinsic value is around $36 per share. That's about $3 above the company's current stock price. They're the factors we mentioned to be mindful of. This would also dramatically outpace how international paper has performed in their past two decades. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for learning about international paper with me, and have a great day.